In this short mini lecture, I'm going to review the different types of muscle that we looked at in lab. So in lab, we talked about skeletal muscle. We talked about cardiac muscle. And we talked about smooth muscle. Skeletal muscle is your only voluntary muscle. That means you can control when you move it. And we talked about two characteristics in lab that you can look for when you're looking at a slide of skeletal muscle. The very first thing um, are the presence of these striations, which are these very, very fine stripes that you see crossing the entire muscle cell. The second characteristic you can look for is the location of the nucleus. Now that can be hard. I mentioned in lab that skeletal muscle cells have multinuclei per one cell, and that's not always going to be evident in the slide that you're looking at. However, because your muscle cells, for example, this would be one cell right here, okay, your muscle cells um, are so f packed with contractile fibers that all the organelles usually get pushed off to the edge. So very similar to dense regular connective tissue, the nuclei are going to appear to be compressed and elongated, usually at the edge of a cell. Smooth muscle is one of our involuntary muscles, so you cannot control it. So you find it in organ walls, like your GI tract, you find it in the walls of some of your vessels, your blood vessels, okay, so on and so forth. A couple characteristics of smooth muscle that we talked about are the spindle-shaped sh cells. When I say spindle, I mean that they taper at the ends, like that. So the arrow here is pointing to the tip of a spindle-shaped cell. And if I were to try to outline some of these smooth muscle cells, you'll begin to see that they all kind of taper like that. Okay, That is a good example or a good characteristic to look for when you're looking at smooth muscle. Another characteristic to look for is the centrally located nucleus. Okay, that's not very centrally located, but usually they are in the center. So if you start looking at some of these nuclei, okay, you can see that more or less, yes, they are located centrally in the cell. There also is only one nucleus per cell, but again, that's kind of going to be hard to, to look for when you're looking at a slide. Cardiac muscle is the third type of muscle that we looked at in lab, and the third type of muscle in your body. Some identifying characteristics to look for are the presence of intercalated discs. I didn't really leave myself enough room to write. Intercalated discs. Intercalated discs are also what we call gap junctions. They basically are like a spaghetti strainer. They have holes in them. And it's important for them to hold, have holes in them because ions and the presence of ions are what actually makes a muscle contract. And because we want our heart to contract all at once, it's important for us to send a signal very fast to all the cells in the muscle wall. And we do so by or through these intercalated discs. The ions, which I'll just give positive charges for simplicity now, move right through one, from one cell to another and an aid in the entire contraction of the heart muscle. So intercalated discs are one thing you wanna, you're want you going to want to look for. Um, like skeletal muscle, at times you'll be able to see fine, tiny little stripes. Those are your striations. Those are not the same thing as in, in your intercalated discs. And finally, um, you will see the nuclei, so lots of nuclei going on in here, okay? One nuclei per cell. You have branching, so a lot of muscle, heart muscle cells branch, okay? And so you see lots of splits going on in cardiac muscle. Okay, so that was a pretty re uh, quick recap of muscle. So we have cardiac, smooth, and skeletal. And instead of just um, creating a whole new mini lecture for you, we do have one more tissue in the body that we need to cover, and that is nervous tissue. So I'm going to um, add one more picture for us to look at of a neuron. Okay, so we've talked about epithelial tissue. We've discussed connective tissue and all the subcategories and types. We've talked about muscle tissue. The last thing that we need to cover is nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is found in your brain and your nerves. The dominant cell ty type that you'll look for are your neurons. However, there are many other very, very important cells in your nervous tissue. 
that's all these tiny nuclei here, and they are called neuroglial or just glial cells, and they are cells that support your neurons. So the characteristics to look at in your neurons are primarily the shape of the cell. I like to think of them as an octopus or a piece of silly putty that you can spread into all these different directions. In the middle of the neuron, right, you have the nucleus, okay, and the dark staining part here is just where the majority of the DNA is stored. And then you have these extensions, and it can be really difficult to tell if you're looking at a dendrite or an axon coming off a neuron. And that is because they both can be equally long. The only other tissue that you might confuse this with in the slides during a lab quiz is perhaps maybe squamous when you're looking um, top down onto squamous cells that look like fried eggs. But keep in mind these cells have these long extensions which are either dendrites or axons and lots of other little tiny support cells. Okay, so that pretty much covers the tissues in the human body. The next mini lecture video that I post, we will move into our first organ system, the integument system, but we will be looking at more slides, and the slides we'll be looking at will be photographs or histolo histologic pictures of the layers of your skin. So we'll see you next time.